Serious guys of Reddit, what's the creepiest thing a lady has done that was meant to be romantic? Story one. My buddy's girlfriend showed up at my front door drunk and ready to bang. She professed her love for me and had built up this secret relationship between the two of us in her head. Like, we had our song and stuff like that. She said that the only reason that she was still with him was so that she could see me. I was pretty creeped out. I was polite, but told her that I wasn't interested in any way. I made sure that she got home safe and then called my friend to tell him what happened. When he confronted her, she said that we had slept together that night. He called me on speakerphone in front of her and asked what happened. I told him the same story I told him the night before. He broke up with her right there and threw her out of his house. She emailed me about six months later to tell me that she missed me. I did not respond. Story two. Finally, I get to tell this story. I'm on the train. This girl behind me is having the most boring phone conversation I've ever heard. Some guy she thinks is cute or something. I keep listening, though, mostly because she's too loud to block out. And things get weird. The guy she's describing sounds pretty physically identical to me. So I turn around, and this girl says, Oh, he's looking at me now. I wonder what he'll do. I wonder if he likes me. She also doesn't have a flipping phone. Yeah, I got off at the next stop and put a whole train between me and that weirdo. Edit, no, she wasn't cute. Story three? I don't think it was meant to be romantic. It was just plain creepy. I work retail at a hardware store. This lady is a regular customer. These days, I've gotten pretty good at avoiding her when she comes in, but for a while, it was difficult. Keep in mind, there is probably a 40 or 50 year age difference. She will always ask me to get things off the bottom shelf, repeatedly changing her mind, just so she can stare at my peach. That wasn't the creepy part, though. What makes it creepy is the ridiculous sigh of satisfaction she would let out every time I bent over. Like full breath in through the nose, followed up with a serious lip licking, smacking, and a long, ah, that sent a shiver down my spine. The kind of heavy sigh of satisfaction that you let out with your first sip of coffee in the morning or when you flop onto your bed after a long day. The first time it happened, I finally understood what women mean when they say they hate being treated like a piece of meat. I felt kind of violated. Story four. She learned my class schedule. Would wait for me before and after class. If I was sitting in a chair, she'd sit on my lap and wouldn't get off till someone yelled. She'd grab my hand if I was walking and try to keep me from pulling away. It got bad. She started to punch me, claiming it was in a joking matter, but I'd been in fistfights with softer blows than that. She then showed me the cuts in her stomach from her nails. She said she'd dig her nails in when she was upset about me. I ended up reporting her self-harm to the school. I did mention how she followed me around and touched me, even though repeatedly, told that it needs to stop. They had a professor of psychology talk to her. Apparently, she walked around campus for a month, screaming about me. Stop taking classes at that time because of how bad it had gotten. She was just trying to have friends and a boyfriend, but went about it in a bad way, so I felt a little bad. I ended up getting a fake girlfriend. A good friend would hold my hand and sit with me whenever she was around. Even went as far as talking about our close relationship life to make the girl uncomfortable and leave. She tried following my fake girlfriend and I once. But fake girlfriend ain't about that life and made sure it didn't happen by making the stalker leave first and then immediately going the opposite way and driving around randomly till we were certain she wasn't behind us. Story five. Don't know if I'd call it meant to be romantic, but definitely creepy. I went on a date with a girl that I'd been chatting with on the internet. We traded pics and everything seemed fine, so we agreed to lunch and take it from there. During lunch, she was incredibly giggly, like everything either of us said had a hidden double meaning or something. It was okay at first, but got old after a while. After lunch, I wasn't really feeling it and was going to end it, but she suggested we head back to my place. Admittedly, she was good-looking enough for me to go there, so I agreed. Once at my apartment, she needed to use the bathroom. She was in there for about 20 minutes, so I figured, you know, pooping. Whatever. When she came out, she had this huge smile on her face. We started talking, and she remarked that she noticed I used the same shampoo as her. Then she said that we also used same soap, toothpaste, and several other toiletries. I realized that she had spent a lot of that time in the bathroom going through my shower, medicine cabinet, and under the sink storage. That really creeped me out. Edit. No, didn't bang. I had already learned my banana and crazy lesson by then. Story six. I honestly got roofied by a woman twice my age. She was not attractive and literally messed up everyone. I knew a couple of guys who got the clap from here. She kept hitting on me and I walked away a minute. I flipping left my beer by her and didn't think about it. Halfway through it, I don't feel right. I mean, serious buzz has kicked in. The problem is you feel buzzed at first, then you're just dumb as cow. I stopped drinking at this point, but got talked into getting in a different vehicle with people I knew. Didn't realize she got in too. Get to bar number two, and I just want to sleep. Nope. Had to get out of the vehicle. Fudge. Tried to hide from her. I know it had to look comical. Called a friend, but did it over Facebook. I even have his phone number. He comes and saves my peach and drags me back to the town I'm from and started in. Not a long drive, but when he picked me up, I couldn't hardly talk. By the time we got back to my hometown, I could talk fine. We sat a minute, and then I left. Head felt weird the next day, and I had a sour stomach, but I got away. Edit. So she did come out to the parking lot where I was hiding ran away and hid behind minivan.
Friend isn't a drinker that saved me. Great guy. Uh, any other questions and comments I will answer. Drinking and on mobile now. Edit 2. Plenty of updated details scattered in comments, such as Buddy picked me up at 2 a.m. with no issue. Also did talk to local cop, but found out it was too late as my system would be clean. You seriously only have a couple hours to be tested. Never needed counseling or anything. Took it as a scary learning experience. I don't know if it was the most scary time I've been through, but it's up there. Story 7. I'm a father. I do my utmost to keep the women I've dated out of my daughter's life. At least until a serious relationship is on the table. Despite my efforts, I've had several women I've dated try to insert themselves into the picture. Turning up at my house unannounced. Turning up at my daughter's school unannounced. Will not leave if they've stayed the night and my daughter is due home from staying with family, hanging around outside my house while my daughter plays outside and trying to talk to her. Had one girl I was seeing for a while take photos from my Facebook of me and my daughter and put them as her profile picture. Only knew her for a few months, and other than accepting a friend request, I never looked at her profile, which she'd virtually built into a family album. Story 8. Had a one-night stand in college borderline blackout. I guess she asked me if I liked her or something, and I drunkenly said yes in my post-coitus drunken high. Had her come over the next night. Woke up and heard her rummaging around my apartment, so I opened one eye and watched. She was looking through my drawers, closets, and food cabinets. I eventually got up and asked what the hell she was doing. She said she just wanted to get to know me better, then started asking me questions about stuff she saw, including medications in my bathroom. Told her to get her clothes on and get the hell out. Eat it. Wah, no need to be talking about assault on either side. It was definitely consensual. The creeping, however, was not. Story 9. I was waiting to order a drink at a bar in Tallahassee when I felt something go up my peach. I turned around fist raised and it was a very drunk FSU girl with her finger up my peach. I was wearing basketball shorts and admittedly shouldn't have been commando at the time so she really got up there. When I lowered my fist and yelled, what the fudge? She started rapping Guilty Conscience by Eminem. She rapped pretty flawlessly for an out a minute before I finally took in the whole situation and decided to walk away. No part of that story is false. Floridians are just the weirdest flipping people on the planet. ETA. Her finger left my peach when I turned around. Just wanted to clear that up. ETA too. It turns out the place was Cabo's Island Grill and Bar. Sorry, everyone with money on bullwinkles. Story 10. Well, okay. When I was 29, I met a gal who was 20 who was smitten with me. She was very sweet and a friend of a friend who said she was sheltered but liked me a lot. So she has this major crush on me but can't ask me out, so this mutual friend asks for her. So I do. We go out a few times. She's very attractive but painfully shy, and I actually enjoy her company. Well, at some point, and I still don't know underscore exactly underscore how this happened, but this is my best theory. Uh, my friend and I were talking about foot fetishes. He has one. I do not. That part is what I know that I heard about later. My next guess is that this gal, who had overheard this conversation and brief remark about foot fetishes, then looked up fetish on the internet and didn't connect it with foot and didn't know what any of it was. Fetishes, and somehow got the idea that it's about things. Well, anyway, you'll get what I mean when I continue. So anyway, one day she presents me with a box, gift-wrapped. I opened it, and inside were small jars with screw cap tops dipped in wax to keep the air tight, I guess. One small jar had two wisdom teeth she'd had removed. One jar had a lock of her hair. A third jar had a used tampon in it. No, she wasn't crazy. And apparently she asked our friend about my close relationship fetishes, and he put the idea in her head that things associated with her or her body would make a nice gift. He apparently didn't mean gift-like thing but gift as in gift of one's self. Here's the thing. He later explained he never meant to make me out to like this stuff and never told her to give me specific items. And as for her, she confessed that when he talked to her, she thought that he was being really filthy dirty, but being incredibly vague to be polite. So he claimed he never said, give him your tampon. And she said, the way he explained all of it, I thought he was just too polite to say it. She had cooked all of it up in her mind. Teeth, hair, tampon. I reacted totally with a straight face and didn't judge at all because she was so painfully awkward. No, she wasn't an Asperger's or something, but apparently she was homeschooled and very willing to be sexually overboard and willing to do anything. Hence the boxed items really weren't a big deal to her while she assembled them. No, we didn't break up because of that, though we did start a close relationship relationship. She wanted to try all sorts of stuff that kind of surprised me. But given the whole box of delights, I should have seen it coming. Blood stuff, pee stuff. I cannot overemphasize that she was a very sweet girl, just a fulminating mess of confused heterosexuality in a 20-year-old body. Story 11. Third year of undergrad, living in a co-ed dorm. Down the hall was a room of freshman girls, all kind of nice in a cloying sort of way and heavily religious. Not my thing, though I've got nothing against it. One of the girls had parents who lived near mine, and she caught a ride home with me for Thanksgiving. We made bland small talk for the two-hour ride, just to pass the time. Dropped her off at her folks' place and didn't think twice about it. Two weeks later, back at school, I came home from class to find 
pictures of babies taped up all over my door. Like a few dozen all clipped out of magazines, courtesy of the girl. I just kind of stared at it blankly for a moment, and feeling majorly creeped out and having no idea what to make of it, I peeled them all off and threw them away. Three days later, same thing. This was the girl's way of hitting on me, because somehow, in her mind, that trip home proved that we were meant for each other. And this was her idea for provoking some subconscious parenting instinct, prompting us to get religiously married and have lots of babies together. I threw them away again. She never mentioned it and never talked to me again. And that was okay by me. Just the inner girl made a pass at me by taping pictures of babies up to my dorm room door. Twice, story 12. I met a girl at the bar I usually go to. She seemed to be really into me and we have a lot of the same interests. So we talked for most of the evening. Found out she is six years older than me, which didn't bother me much considering how cool she seemed. Thought that her added experience might teach me some new interesting things. Boy, did it. After the bar closed, 2 a.m., we went to her place, and luckily, her roommate was away for the holidays. Fast forward a bit, and things are starting to get heated as we are making out and almost on the couch. Straddling me, she tells me to relax my mouth. Confused, I comply with her request. She starts to what I can best describe as perform a tongue-based examination of my mouth. Not in a weird make-out kind of way. More as sticking her tongue between my lips and teeth, both the teeth in front and to the back while doing a kissing motion with her lips every so often. I give it a few minutes of trying to figure out what she is trying to do while kissing her back, which she then told me not to do, and just to relax. I could endure about a minute of sitting with my mouth open while she tongue explore kissed me before it got too weird for me. The whole time I felt like a mother bird feeding its children with food in its mouth. I started moving for her to get off, lit a breathe, and asked her what that was. Oh, it's just something I like to do. I find it to be very intimate. Intimate is not the world I would use to describe that event. I finished half of my breathe, got up and told her I gotta go while already heading for the door. I have not responded to any of her calls, messages. Story 13. I don't know if it was intended to be romantic. It was on my birthday, and I had rented out a room where we could hang out and drink and be ridiculous, as I didn't have a place of my own yet. One girl that shows up is completely insecure about herself, and was always one to wonder why the guys never hit on her. But this night, she wasn't having that. She was going to let her confidence shine the only way she knew how, and that was by placing herself on the bed and just opening her legs as wide as she could. She was in ballet, and holding conversations about how bad she wanted someone to jump on her and make a night of it. Now, some of you may read that and think that, wow, why didn't you jump her bones? But her personality was off the flipping charts. I would almost say she was like the redhead in Wedding Crashers. Socially awkward, wanting attention, and how she was just going a noud. It was one of the biggest turnoffs for such an easy good time. Story 14. I had a girlfriend tell me her grandmother passed away and left her a huge inheritance. My family and I had been so awesome to her that she bought me a freaking brand new car. Was rocking the heck out of it until she started getting sketchy about the details of the deed and registration. Turns out she was a certified pathological liar. She took a car on a test drive and just never brought it back. Believe it or not, she's done worse. She also faked sonograms to convince me she was pregnant. And it turns out those hour-long trips to the ATM to get cash were actually appointments she made hooking on Craigslist. Oh, and she faked her mother's death so she could manipulate her way into moving in with me. Sadly, I have more to go, but not sure if anyone will even read this. All the above is certified, 100% true. Edit 1. Combining to make it easier to read. Thanks for replying. Yep, 100% certified crazy. That car was reported stolen after she didn't bring it back. It may seem lucky that I didn't get pulled over, but my parents were totally against such a luxurious gift, so they gave nonsense every time I drove it. Probably saved me from catching a charge. Another whopper. I was still dealing with issues over a bad breakup before her, so I started writing. Letters ID never send, poetry, typical heartbreak nonsense. She read it and said she'd send it to her publisher. She claimed she wrote a book, also a lie. All of a sudden, I started getting massive royalty checks from her publisher. I was cashing checks for $5,000 weekly. Yes, they cleared. I quit my job and started writing full-time, submitting my work via email and fax. It stopped when her publisher started having an affair with her stepdad. Mom was dead, after all. Total BS. She forged checks from her stepdad's account to an account she set up just to fool me. Money was all stolen. Believe it or not, I still got more. Oh, by the way, after she was out of my life for good, when I went on dates and told the story to new women, it sounded so insane that my mom and dad actually had to vouch for me. Update one. First, I should say this. This all happened about 10 years ago. It was horrible and annoying at the time, but it's truly become one of those things you look back and laugh at. Let's see. To answer the dollar, dollar, dollar question, no, I did not have to give anything back. Even after everything came out, she never asked for it. Her family was pretty well off, so while it was definitely noticed, they worked it out with her. I didn't ask. 
didn't want to know. It didn't reach $20,000, more like $12,500. I was in college at the time, and every penny I got went to tuition and debt I had from it. So at the end, I didn't have anything to give back anyway. Back to her shenanigans. After her stepdad had an affair with her publisher and the money stopped coming in, I spent all the money on school, so I was still pretty broke. She had an older family friend who was a lawyer and needed an assistant, so I started communicating with her via email. I found it odd that the emails kept asking about our relationship, and after a couple weeks of communicating, I go on her computer and find out there was no lawyer. I was emailing back and forth with the psycho. It was especially nuts, considering that while I sat 10 feet away from her, she was replying to me. There were a million times I wanted to end the relationship, but every time I came close, some other drama happened that would make me look like a total jerk for leaving. She even faked having cancer. For two months, she went for three ex-weekly treatments. Turns out she was just hanging at Starbucks for a couple hours. Even after it was finally over, she still haunted me. Remember that heartbreak girl I mentioned earlier? Whole other story there. Well, anyway, about a year after Psycho and I broke up, I get an email addressed from that girl I loved. Oh, I made a huge mistake. The new guy treats me like garbage. I really miss you. Give me another chance. Etc. Etc. After the earlier drama, I was really skeptical, so I started asking some confirmation questions, which she couldn't answer. Instead, I started getting, hurry, he's going to find me. Meet me at such and such location. Hurry. At that point, I knew what was up and told her to F off. I moved out of the parents by then and had my own apartment. And she came by and sat in the parking lot waiting for me a few times. But nothing ever happened from there. For those of you curious, I'm not a total idiot. I did realize that things were sketchy from the beginning. Problem was, she was very good at coming up with proof and explanations. She manipulated ATM receipts, bank statements, even had a sonogram with my name on it. The stress of that whopper caused me to fail to college classes. The way it all came out was I finally said, there's no way so much drama can happen to one person. She said her family friend could confirm everything for me. Turns out the family friend was her therapist. If I get enough requests, I'll elaborate or answer questions. In retrospect, it was entertaining at the least. Story 15. Nothing like the top post, but one girl I worked with discovered we shared some interests and basically told me she was going to stalk me until we went out. I told her, please don't, and that I was in a relationship. She asked what my girlfriend's name was. I told her I'd rather not say. She then intimated that I didn't really have one, then something about how was she supposed to know who the competition was, etc. She eyed me one night, and I begged off, saying we were going out with friends to dinner and a movie. What restaurant? What film? What theater? Um, no. Tell her you're sick and then come over and fudge me. Went to HR the next day and showed them the IMs. She was a contractor, so they just canceled the contract. I preemptively blocked her on IM, but she emailed my work email with lots of fudge yous, called me a dirty liar, said I had come on to her, etc. Somehow she had gotten my phone number and the texts and phone calls started. I finally told her if I heard from her again, I was going to the police and filing a restraining order. She told me that a restraining order didn't scare her, that she had already had one filed against her, and that the cops didn't do anything when she violated it. But in any case, I didn't hear from her after that. Because of this girl, I still don't use my real name online anywhere. Story 16. My buddy, this girl we knew, and I were watching The Dictator in her room on a day where all of our classes were canceled due to snow, so we all decided to day drink. She told my friend to leave the room for 15 minutes and then begged me to put my hands on her ball. I was actually trying to watch the movie and wasn't really into it even though I was attracted to her. Then she forcibly grabbed my hands and put them on her ball under her shirt. Then when I wouldn't make any moves further, she proceeded to ask me multiple times why I wouldn't have close relationship with her. She also showed me a list of all the guys she's had close relationship with, like it was supposed to turn me on or something. Overall, it was extremely awkward and uncomfortable, so I left while my friend proceeds to think I'm weird or boy because I didn't fudge her. Story 17. In college, I started hanging out with a girl who told me stories of being assaulted and beaten by her ex and how her mother was an abusive, controlling bad person. We had close relationship once. I was very drunk. Later found out her aim was to get me drunk so she could take me to her cousin's apt. This was all planned out between the two of them. And it just seemed weird. Not the hot slash, alluring slash romantic feeling I'd had when we made out. No, this was not my first time. Then we had close relationship again and I couldn't keep it up. Couldn't finish. I realized I just wasn't attracted to her six yelly and this wouldn't work. We'd officially had a talk that we were buddies and friends, nothing more. So I just stopped having close relationship with her and went on with my life. A few weeks later, she tells me she's prego and I tell her we will work this out and I'll be there to help her through it and take part in raising a child. Not the answer she was looking for. After taking the leap to divulge to my very conservative Protestant Christian family that I'd impregnated a woman and dealing with the fallout of that, she comes back and says she miscarried and cried on my shoulder. I console her and do everything I can make sure she seemed recovered before going home, promising we will continue to be friends. This is when it gets super messed up. She goes to my roommate and tells him the same thing. 
but he's even more gullible than I am and falls for this completely. Apparently, he'd had a crush on her for a while, but refused to make a move out of some sense of loyalty to me, and they begin dating. Two weeks later, they're engaged. We all still hang out, and I think everything is fine. Two people that had close relationship previously can be cool with each other platonically, right? We're all adults here, right? Then she starts separating him from me. First physically, by taking up all his free time so he couldn't hang with me. Then by slowly turning him against our mutual friends so he wouldn't go to the same parties or events. Then what was supposed to be the just another stage of this thing turned him around. She said that I'd assaulted her twice. He floored the brakes on this whole thing, knowing me very well and that I'm just not capable of that kind of act in any situation under any circumstances. She apparently spread this rumor successfully and some people I knew will to this day not speak to me or have anything to do with me. The whole relationship fell apart in a matter of a couple of days. I found out that the whole time she was intimate with me, she had the same arrangement with four other guys and told each of us the same story. She'd pick guys with different lifestyles so that we wouldn't likely befriend the others and never hung out with any of us at the campus we attended other than a quick cane. Then while she was engaged to my roommate, she'd snared one of the other guys as well, so she had two on tap. She'd also been using the stories of cutting and her abusive mom as a ploy to try to get a guy to let her move in, and this was known by her mom. Mom was real culprit here, teaching her daughter to manipulate a man to marry her, impregnate her, then divorce him and take all his stuff and get child support. I know assault is a real thing and a terrible thing, but every time I hear a girl talk about getting assaulted after going out drinking in college, it makes my ears burn. I'm terrible. Sorry a bad thing happened to all the women with legit assault in their past. To any woman who redefines assault after the fact to support your ego, you are what is wrong with human beings. Congratu freaking lations. Story 18. I had a girlfriend freshman year of high school. We dated for five months, but on our sixth month anniversary, she texted me, happy sixth anniversary. She originally broke up with me because she wanted to be with someone else. I was overjoyed when she broke up with me because she would always threaten when I would bring up breaking up. After four hours of breaking up with me, she called and texted, trying to convince me that she wanted to get back together. I eventually told her hell no and a few weeks pass in awkward silence. We both go to a party for a mutual friend, but little did I know that everyone at the party is in on this. As time goes on, people end up having to leave, and I see that she is panicking because they were supposed to help her with what's coming next. When I'm the last person at the party besides her and the mutual friend, she starts to sing with the mutual fried playing piano. Everyone at the party was supposed to play an instrument. She handed me a notepad with the lyrics of the song. In each stanza, one letter was highlighted. By the end of the song, it spells out, can we try again? The mutual friend runs into the closet on the far side of the room to let us figure things out. I'm trying my hardest to not scream and run. I slowly tell her that I do not want to date her again, and she collapses into tears. Now here is the part that was caused by a combination of my freshman awkwardness and manners. I cross the room, open up the closet that the mutual friend is hiding in, and thank her for having me over. But no, I will not date her again. The mutual friend walks me to the door, during which we have to walk past my sobbing ex. I opened the front door, stumbled into the light, and called my dad, begging him to pick me up. Story 19. I work for a very large, red, huge coffee company. We have a regular who used to come through the drive-thru and order the same thing every time. She was older, very flirty, but never too much trouble. One day my coworker told me that she took a picture of me when my back was turned. She started coming into the store and talking to me, trying to get me to notice her, etc. She also continued taking pictures of me while I was working behind the bar. I never saw this. Coworkers would always let me know after the fact. When I wasn't working, she asked coworkers when I would be in next. One day, she was waiting in the parking lot for me at 5 a.m., which is when we open. That was the creepiest thing. TBH, it's still happening, and I just talked to my manager about it yesterday. But she's a pushover, so I don't know what more I can do about it just yet. Story 20. Spiked my drink and had close relationship with me after I said I didn't want close relationship. She genuinely thought she was being flirtatious or something. Another one asked me for computer help. While her father was downstairs, she started removing layers because of the heat. It really was hot out and lied on her back on the floor next to the computer. She sort of rolled around lazily like you do when you first wake up, and the bed is at its comfiest. All I could think of was an animal presenting itself for mating, with its father downstairs and no doors between us. She admitted, when taking me home, that she had been trying to seduce me. We're good friends now, but I never forget that she's a weird one. Story 21. She orchestrated an entire party just to try and hook up with me. I had a female friend who, very shortly after meeting me, started aggressively hitting on me. I immediately let her know she wasn't my type and that I didn't feel the same way, but I genuinely wanted to stay friends and keep in touch. She took it very well, and everything seemed fine. A few months later, she invites me to a party she's having at her house. I show up with my buddy and some booze, and we all get to drinking. I quickly realized something seemed off, though. Every other girl at this party was actively avoiding me. It's not like they were just not interested in me. 
They would literally scamper off if I started. I made eye contact or started towards them. It was frustrating because besides my friend and I, everyone else there was a girl. I didn't even want to bother him because he was hitting it off really well with one of the girls there. So I just end up awkwardly milling around, not talking to anyone for about half an hour. After a while, someone suggests truth or dare. Finally, I thought, something to do. We all get settled in, and the first girl sets her sights on me. She dares me to take my shirt off. Sure, okay, whatever. Next round, I get dared to kiss the host of the party. Not really feeling it, but I'm not one to terminate the vibe, so sure. Very next round, I get dared to make out with the host for one minute. I refuse this one and choose truth, only to be asked something about my banana. What the fudge? At this point, it has become very obvious that something was up. I later found out the host of the party had marked me as hers, and every other girl at this party was there as a sort of ten-person wingman crew. My friend had also noticed something was up at this point. We were too drunk to leave, but he had my back for the rest of the night, and together we managed to steer the party in a more light-hearted direction. After the awkward initial rounds of truth or dare, things started to pick up and we all had a good time. Thinking the worst was over, I let myself relax a bit more. The night wound down and everyone began finding places to crash. I remember grabbing a pillow and just finding a place on the floor. I woke up about 4 a.m. to discover the girl hosting the party had snuck up on me during the night and was spooning me. She had me in a oh-no-death grip, open mouth breathing right down my neck. I tried wiggling away, but she really had my legs pinned. She's a pretty big girl. I absolutely could not move. So I lay there with my eyes wide open, resigned to myself to my fate, and waited for the sun to come up. The second six o'clock rolled around, I grabbed my buddy and we bounced before anyone else woke up. I was super creeped out and I've barely talked to this girl since. The story does have a happy ending though. My buddy is still dating the girl he met that night today, almost three years later, and he plans on proposing to her soon. Um, story 22. Long story short, there was two girls that I was the same major as I was in college. I had no interest in dating either, but we all three started hanging out together as drinking buddies for a while. I trusted them enough to really open myself up with them. One of these girls, girl A, was also friends with my sister, who did not know we partied or went out for drinks. One weekend while girl B was in another country, girl A, my sister, and I were at her place with another friend of girl A's. Once my sister left, we had a couple blue moons and watched a movie just with the three of us. A week later, when girl B came back from China, she tells me the story. Having randomly found a spot with Wi-Fi, girl B received a message from girl A. The message was about how girl A suddenly developed feelings for me and decided it was time to make a move. That move was to spontaneously straddle me and kiss me to see what happened. Girl B spent the whole time time talking her out of it. I'm a small guy. She would have held me down. Later, we learned that she was already pregnant by some other guy on that night, and it's taken all my manners to not describe her attractiveness until now, but yikes. Needless to say, girl B is now my best friend. On top of that, it comes to surface that girl A was only friends with my sister to get to me. She immediately ended the friendship when my sister found out. Not as creepy as some, but it was uncomfortable at least. Story 23. Oh, the benefits of living in a small town. There's this girl who found me on POF. She sent me a message. I ignored it. Ugly kids, spelling mistakes, high school education, not my type. She got upset with the ignoring, so she sent some harassing emails. Eventually, I had enough. I put her in her place and blocked her. Well, you know the expression, hell hath no fury like a scorned woman? You got it. She knew where I worked. She booked an appointment to see me, came to my office, and... Instead of a meeting, told me how we should be together, despite the kids slash ugliness slash etc. I polite but firmly told her to get the fudge out of my office. And that's when the hitting started. She jumped over the desk, punched me in the face, then starting punching herself in the face. Repeatedly. Blood everywhere. The receptionist calls the police. I get restrained, then questioned. Thankfully, we had a video camera that logged the whole thing. She got herself into royal trouble and, well, it's all better now. Let this be a lesson, kids. Stay away from meth. It makes you crazy. Story 24. One day after work, I decided to x shopping for my mom. As I was leaving work, I got a phone call from this girl. She asked me what I was doing, and I said I was going to Walmart to buy my mom an x gift. She asked me if she could come with me. I said, no, I am not near your house. She imminently said, why do you always lie to me? I asked her what she was talking about, and she said to look in my rearview mirror. I looked, and there she was in the passenger seat next to her mom, driving right behind me. I hung up, pulled into the parking lot, and ran for the doors. Unfortunately, there was an empty spot right next to mine, so her mom pulled up right next to me. I went inside the store and waited there for about an hour. I bought my mom a present and walked back to my car. Her mom was still sitting here and started yelling at me, asking why didn't I love her daughter. Her daughter was clearly still in the car, but the seat was laid all the way back and she wasn't looking at me. I just said to leave me alone, got in my car, and started driving home. That wasn't even the start of things. Before this happened, she invited me over to her house for Thanksgiving dinner. I showed up, she brought me inside, locked the door behind me, and started asking me why I didn't love her daughter. There was no turkey or any food, 
just one crazy mom trying to get someone to love her crazy daughter. She also invited me to Thanksgiving dinner with no food, just craziness. Story 25. This girl I dated would bring me gifts every time she came over. Pretty soon, I noticed that these gifts were actually just trinkets from her home. She was slowly moving in and marking her territory. One day, she brought over a pumpkin pie. She said she made it special for me. I set it aside, not thinking much of it. She called me several times throughout the day, asking if I had tried the pie. No, not yet, I would say. She called me several more times with just that intention. She wanted to know if I had tried the pie. It began to make me feel suspicious, and so I ended up throwing the flipping pie in the garbage. She called back the next morning, asked if I had tried the pie, and I responded, Yes, it was good. She was silent for a good minute and told me that she would call me back. She waited about four hours later, called me back, and when I answered, she said, You didn't try the pie, did you? Story 26. One time my friend told my girlfriend at the time that I had a surprise for her the next day. In reality, I didn't want her to know I was taking my driver's license test so that I wouldn't have to be embarrassed in the event that I fail and have to tell her that or surprise her with my driver's license if I pass. But she thought the surprise was that I was going to propose to her. She wore a fancy dress and everything. She started crying when she heard me telling my mom on the phone that I didn't pass. At first, I was thinking, wow, I was right to try to keep it a secret. Oh, no. But no, I... Sniffle. Thought you were going to propose to me. Edit. We were 18. We broke up six months later. Story 27. My ex during Valentine's Day decided to surprise serenade me with a guitar outside my dorm window. The thing is, I lived on the fourth floor and he decided to do it at 8 a.m. So he was on the street and bellowing to me at the top of his lungs so that I could hear from my window while waking up everyone in the building. Everything would have been dandy if he was a good singer, but he's not. There were so many people walking back and forth staring at him. He couldn't hear me when I was yelling at him to stop. It was just an awful situation. This was the same ex who wrecked his front bumper because he dropped his car too low. Story 28. My now husband, after a night of drinking in college, decided he would sneak into my dorm room, I had to work the following morning, and kiss me awake and we'd have some sexy time. He completely overestimated the level of suaveness he could pull off while plastered. He makes it through the door without me hearing, but I wake up to a dude crawling up my body from the bottom of my twin bed. I screamed and shoved, as one should in such a scenario, and he ended up on the floor where he very nearly passed out. About this time, I realized who it was. Got his butt up off the floor, closed the door after assuring my sleepy neighbor that he was fine, and shoved him into my bed. I got into bed, and he attempted to crawl on top of me, mumbling something about how alluring I was in the middle of the night. It took two go-to-sleepy Vandy boys before he finally rolled over and passed out. He had no idea the next day how he'd ended up in my bed. Edit. A word. Story 29. Actually, it was pretty cute, and I loved it at the time because it was dorky as fudge. Still a little groan-worthy. Back in high school, my ex and I played World of Warcraft with our friends. We did an in-game date, where he had me put him on auto-follow and asked me to keep my eyes closed. Then he took our characters to this hidden spot with a pretty waterfall, pond, pretty view, etc., and we proceeded to have a picnic with our characters. Thinking about it makes me hide my face in my hands, but we both knew it was dorky and was just a little fun. I'm just glad we went on real, regular dates, too or else that would have been a problem. Edit. I wasn't expecting that story to be gold-worthy, but thank you. Story 30. An older guy that I'd known for a while as friends, and I decided to go to out one day, and after a lovely day, went back to his house to hang out talk. He is a very accomplished artist, and as I was looking at his artwork, I hear him call my name, and I turn around, and he slides out from behind a wall. All risky business style, but on a rolling chair, thankfully with his clothes on, and starts to serenade me on his tuba. I just stood there with the most uncomfortable smile I've ever held in my entire life, waiting for the serenade to end. I still squirm to this day thinking about how uncomfortable it made me. Edit. He had also pulled out a top hat and was wearing it during the serenade. I don't know how I forgot to mention that before. I think I was trying to repress. Story 31. My ex-BF and I had split up but were starting to be on good terms again. He came to visit me when I was at college and when my roommates left, he asked me if he could use my laptop. He then pulled up his email and asked me to come over. He had made the cheesiest slideshow set to some corny love song with pictures of us. Then it ended on a slide of, will you be my girlfriend again? He was trying really hard, so I told him we could talk more about it. We went to dinner and I saw him looking at his phone all secretive. He was still texting the girl who had caused us our initial problems. Needless to say, it didn't work out. Story 32. There was this guy that I was making out with, but I was hell-bent on not letting it get serious. He was handsome, but he was way too cringy. So one night, he texts me to come up to his dorm and I'm expecting the usual makeout session. When I arrive, he greets me at the door. Candles glittering like a goddamn Tony Braxton video. We weren't even allowed to have candles. He picks me up in bridegroom pose and whisks me over to his twin bed. All the while, his poor roommate is hunched over his computer in the corner with his headphones on, just pretending that this is all not happening. 
The guy proceeds to play me a song he wrote on his acoustic guitar and sings to me with tears in his eyes. I just kept glancing at the roommate for some intervention, but nah, he wasn't having it. When he finishes, he puffs his chest for courage and confidently declares his love for me. There was a long cliffhanger of a silence before I said, I'm sorry, but I don't feel the same. That was about the time he literally ripped off his button-up shirt in some display of brute strength and started banging his head on the wall, sobbing and murmuring about being pathetic. I actually walked over and used my hand as a cushion between his forehead and the wall to get him to stop. Meanwhile, his roommate never acknowledged what was going on around him. Not even once. Story 33. Not my story, but a friend of mine had a really good friend who was a snuggle makeout buddy when the mood was right. They weren't dating or anything, just friends with benefits. This guy intentionally had a baby with his now ex-girlfriend after they had been dating for about three months, so, you know, he's good at making bad choices. Anyways, one night they are making out in his bed and he starts getting really into it and they're grinding pretty good all is well. But then suddenly he props himself up and then yells, Oh, I just want to have unprotected close relationship with you. She noped out of there pretty fast. Story 34. Well, he yelled, not something my so did, but something I did. My then girlfriend, now wife, started crying about something. I can't remember what. I think we may have been joking around, me tickling her or something, and I seem to recall I accidentally hurt her. So she's crying, and like the idiot man I am, I have no idea what I should do, so I pick up one of her big law books, and I slam it down, spine first, on my hand. She stops crying for a second and says, Why did you do that? Because I hurt you, so I hurt myself. Now we're both hurt. Classic man logic, ladies and gentlemen. She started crying harder than before, but eventually she started laughing, and goddamn did that hurt. Story 35. Told me he discussed my ball with his dad. I should add that he had never even seen nor touched my ball at this point, and because of it, he never did after either. Edit. Basically, I've got really big ball, bigger than normal people of my size. So his dad asked him how he felt about it. He told his dad he was excited about it, and his dad told him he is into small tittied girls and anything bigger than a handful is a waste. He got into with his dad about it, how he likes big ball, blah, blah, blah. And then he called me and told me about the whole encounter. Yeah, didn't want to meet the folks after that. Story 36. My wife has the story of all stories. She had divorced and tried the online dating scene. She met a guy on a local site that had the username of Krispy Kreme. She had talked to him a few times and decided that he was all right. She invited him over and had her cousin standing by in case he was a creeper. The guy's username of Krispy Kreme was obviously because that's where he worked at the time. He at least owned it and showed up with a dozen donuts as a gift for her. After an hour, she felt pretty comfortable and sent her cousin ahead so they could visit alone before she would be leaving to join her cousin at a family function. That's when Krispy Kreme turned into Mr. Tickles. The playful tickling led to the floor where he got on top of her. With his unyielding powers of seduction, he grabbed a donut from the box and began to eat it over the top of her seductively. He tunged the middle of it and took large bites, offering his glazed, covered fingers to her to lick off. She said little crumbs and pieces of frosting were falling onto her face, and she was too stunned to even do anything. When he offered her fingers to her, she turned away like a toddler refusing baby food. He simply shrugged and went on with the show. As he wrapped up the donut and looked down at her, he did the only thing a man in his position could do, eat a second donut. At this point, my wife had enough and got up and kicked him out. The last thing he said to her is, well, call me later, Kay. To this day, I ensure that I never eat a donut without helping her relive that magical moment again and again and again. Story 37. I think the cringiest thing I've ever done is probably as follows. Q trying to be romantic as all cow and we started getting undressed on a downstairs couch. I thought we should move this upstairs, so I picked her up groom's bride style while my only article of clothing were socks. After very carefully moving up the stairs to avoid slipping as I turned to take her into the room, I smacked her head on the door frame, followed by an immediate turn back around, an oh cow, a step backwards, a slip on the stairs, and a semi-throw of her down the stairs. I managed to grab her foot so, instead of sailing over a flight of stairs face first, she merely landed on them. Then, being the genius that I was, I decided I should rectify this situation by immediately jumping down and picking her up over the shoulder style. This worked, but hurt her stomach greatly because of the suddenness. To top it all off, I smacked her head once more, getting her through the door, and had the most awkward dismount of her onto the bed that has ever been seen by man, involving me doing a near-front flip at the side of the bed so she could lay down on her back. Story 38. I had an ex back in the 90s who went down on me while we were watching a movie. It was nice. We sat quietly watching the movie after, and when it was over 90 minutes later, I asked her what she thought. She didn't answer. She just smiled. I got up and went to the bathroom. Then I went to get a snack from the kitchen. I asked her if she wanted anything, and she still didn't answer. I think you can guess where this is going. After not talking for nearly three hours, I finally asked her if something was wrong. She opened her mouth and showed me my load. She'd been quietly swishing it around in her mouth the whole time. 
When she finally swallowed it, she told me it was because she loved me so much she couldn't bear to part with it. I saw something to that effect in an OAG meme years later, and I still shudder. 